Hey, look, before you go, come back, come back. Is that your uh, wife right here? Yeah. That's your wife? Yeah. All praises, all praises. Get uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Yeah. All right, because that's something that you usually don't see in our communities. You understand what I'm saying? You usually don't see a man out here with his wife, out here listening to the Bible, to men of the Lord, teaching you how to repent and to keep God's commandments. All right, read what you got. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. What does the Bible say? Marriage is honorable in all. So tell me how marriage is honorable today. Which sets it apart from the opposite of marriage, which is boyfriend and girlfriend? The commitment. Say it again. The commitment. The commitment to what? To who? My real, my real friend is the best. Being true to each other. Being true to you. What does that look like today? Because marriage is not uh, a common, you know, practice in our, in our, in our community. All right. So what sets marriage apart and, and makes it so precious in God's sight? For one, you did it in front of God. Say it again. You did it in front of God. For one, you did it in front of God. Okay, so you 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 may have made some commitment to the Lord. All right. How do you hold yourselves accountable to that today? I mean, you know, just trying to build by being faithful, building. Try building, being faithful. Okay, how long y'all been married? Say it again. Okay, so it's still fresh. Ink ain't even dried on, dried on the paper, right? All right, finish reading that. Yes, sir. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. All right, so when you say the bed undefiled, what's that mean? That means you can do anything you want with your wife in that bed, right? Opposed to going out and getting a hoe or a prostitute or, you know, sleeping around from man to man, right? The Bible says that marriage is honorable. It's a precious thing, all right? So that's, that's something you should have confidence in today. You should feel like you a step ahead, you understand, of, of, of the rest of, of your people out here today that's hanging out in the clubs, you understand? Because in the club scene, is that... Uh, uh, mar married people going to the club together, or is that single people looking to hook up? We really don't go to the club. Not y'all, but your people. Single people, right? Yeah, because you you gotta you gotta deal with the reality today, and the reality today is that your people is hanging out in these clubs and being boyfriend girlfriend so on, so on and so forth. So there's judgment for that. Finish that. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed on the foul, but whoremongers and adulterers, God. Real judge. So that's a judgment, Lord's will, that you will avoid, right? Because God says, don't be a, don't uh, have a, a boyfriend, don't have a girlfriend. All right, y'all need to get married so that you can raise up children, right? And teach those children how to do the same thing that you did right. to bring back your nation right. and to get your nation in order. You understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna get you another law. Get First Corinthians chapter 11 because this is something that we don't read too often. All right. So in your relationship. Is it a 50-50 relationship? Is it a 100-100 a, a relationship? Is it a 30-70? How would you describe that? It's 50-50. It's 50-50. All right, we're going to see what God says about how your relationship should be. All right, read what you got. Straight to it. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1. On. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. All right, so this is Paul speaking. He's saying, look, follow me and after after my ways and the things that I teach because I've learned these things from the Lord. Y'all following me? Come on. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the Bible said that the head of the man is who? Right. I'm a man, right? So who's my head? That means that I got to do exactly what Christ said do, right? All right, now let me ask you this. Is that 50-50 with Christ? With me and Christ, is it 50-50? Yeah, it nah, it's nah. not 50-50. Nah, it's not. I ain't no Christ level, am I? Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Read it again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. All right, so if Christ is like, look, I want you to not go and buy and sell, you know, on the Sabbath day. And, and you know, if Christ tells me to do that, do I have... I, I, am I? Am I? Can I? Can I still go to the store because I have? I can make fifty percent of that decision to go, or I need not to go at all. I, I need not to go at all. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? So what Christ say, I have to be in full submission to that. That's right. There's no way that I can be in fifty percent agreement with Christ and still be keeping His commandments. That's right. I have to be one hundred percent in agreement with Christ in order to be keeping His commandments. That's very clear and plain, right? Who are we talking about? That's a depiction of Christ. Not this one, but that one right there. Right? The black Messiah. 
You understand? The God of Israel. He gave his people right here. I'm a part of this people right here. He gave us commandments. So I have to do exactly what he said. Right? And if I fall short, what do I have to do? I got to repent. I have to come to him. I have to ask for forgiveness. Let him know I'm sorry. I fell short. This, that, and the third. Let him know what it was so I can get that thing right with him. Right? Is that a 50 50? No, it's not. It's not. All right, read on. The head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. Wait, what did the Bible say? And the head. So, just like we read before, you understand? So, just like we read before with Christ, right, and him being the head of man. What are we reading about the woman? Come on. The head of the woman is the man. So who is the head of the woman? Who who'd you say? I see you pointing. I need to hear you say it. The man. The man. You see that? All right. So did I say that or did we read that out the Bible? All right. So your spirit got to bear witness with that just like the brother was bringing out. You understand what I'm saying? Because God said this is the order that's going to establish and save your community. So if you really love your people, right, what you going to do? Submit yourself to your husband in everything. Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, get that. You're going to do that. If you really love your husband, all right, if you really love your people, right, if you really want to uh, uh, have, have children, all right, and have them grow up with a, with a, a confident mindset, not be confused out here, all right, now you're going to submit yourself to your husband, right? And, and we're going to read with the, we're going to read Ephesians 5. Read that. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. What does the Bible say? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. So just like this man, you understand, taught the church. He instructed them, right? Right? He called them, right? He protected them from harm, provided them, fed them, Right? Invited them to his house. He did all of these things. You understand? He lived life with them. All right? And kept them from evil and taught them the good. Right? That's the same way that the man, right, has to do to his woman. Right? To his wife. Right? Not his girlfriend. His wife. Because there's no speak of boyfriend, girlfriend in the Bible at all. They don't exist. Read on. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Read verse 21. Is that what I want? Verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. So the Bible says that you have to submit yourself to whose husband? I can't hear you. To your husband, right? Come on. As unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. Where is it in everything? Get that part from me. You know what I'm talking about? What is it? Officer Jonathan. Ephesians 5 and what? Where it says in everything. So, what is it? 5 and 23. Read that for me. Go ahead. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's enough. That's it? It's 14, Get that one. Get, it's verse 24? Get verse 24. Yes, sir. Is that it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold on. Let me read it first. <laughs> hey, they, they keep calling stuff out. That's it. Read that. All right. Pay close attention, sister. Read. 23. No. 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And, and what things? In everything. So in everything right in everything you see that that's beautiful that should be music to your ears brother you understand that should make your life easy right but guess what it got to be in righteousness so give me that in deuteronomy chapter six because you can't be out here doing evil and expect your wife to submit to you right what type of example are you showing you understand what i'm saying that's not right thus saith the lord read what you got the book of deuteronomy chapter six verse 25 Come on. and it shall be our righteousness right so in everything meaning everything in righteousness righteousness is to do good is to keep god's laws right? right read what you got it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments so we only righteous if we're doing what read it again pay close attention you listening brother read what you got it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments so it's only our righteousness if we're doing the commandments you understand it's a commandment 
for, for, for the wife to be in subjection to her husband, right? And her husband, it's a commandment for you to be in subjection to who? No, that's not true. It's a commandment for you to be in subjection to who? I mean, for God too, but you know. To Christ, brother, to Christ. You can't be in subjection to your wife because if this is in subjection to her, then who's leading who? I'm confused now. I'm confused. What if there's a decision to make? Give me that Amos chapter three. What if there's a decision to make? Yes, sir. And she don't agree with you. If you follow her, then what y'all gonna do? I, I can't hear you. Y'all gonna pray? If there's a decision to make, all right, you got a husband and a man, right? In righteousness, all right? Okay, you might not be married. Have you ever been married before? Yes. All right, so you understand what I'm talking about. All right, read what you got. The book of Amos chapter three, verse three. Can two walk together except they be agreed? That's the question I have. Can two walk together except they be agreed? I mean, see, yeah. Can you walk together with someone that is in total disagreement with you? I mean, yeah, it'll get right. If, can you walk? It, it, the only way it'll get right is if what? What has to happen in order for that to get right? Two people that don't agree trying to walk together. You trying to go east, I'm trying to go west. We just gonna get further and further apart until we do what? You have to pray together. Until we, and, and to, to walk together. So someone's mind has to change. You gotta either say, all right, I'm gonna agree to to go your way or you gonna agree to go my way. Right. The Bible says that the man is the head. You understand? So the woman has to agree to follow a righteous man. There's no confusion there. You understand what I'm saying? How can two walk together except they be agreed? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.